Hey, this is Matt. Once again, welcome back to another review for the Dolph Lundgren Marathon. I wasn't sure actually if I was going to talk about this because I already reviewed this film when I did my John Claude Van Damme Marathon, where I reviewed all of his movies. But if I'm doing a Dolph Lundgren Marathon, I gotta talk about this because this is up there. And it's funny, I just reviewed Showdown Little Tokyo and I said, well, that's my second favorite Dolph Lundgren film. Um, might have to put this as number, the second favorite. Just watch it again. I always love this film, but watch it again just reminds me of just how awesome this movie is. And I love Showdown Little Tokyo, don't get me wrong. But Universal Soldier is a fucking classic as well. Great double feature, but... Yeah, I'll probably say, I count peace, show to little. I mean, I count peace, Universal Soldier, show little Tokyo. The Punisher is pretty damn good too. See, that's hard doing lists. You, you fucking change. It changes all the time. Other than my number one, because they're all you know, movies I absolutely love. And Universal Soldier, I mean, you have Van Damme and Dolph Lundgren, two guys I love going head to head and I like other films that can do this there's an actual winner that's one thing I give Dolph Lundgren credit for he's willing to lose on a movie he's willing to get his ass kicked in a movie <clears throat> a lot of action stars are not willing to do that but Dolph is so I give him the utmost respect for that and this movie is <clears throat> one of the early films of Roland Emmerich it's my favorite Roland Emmerich film. I mean, I love Independence Day. Yes, I like Godzilla, um, among other films. But I love Universal Soldier. I thought Roland Emmerich did a wonderful job directing this. I really enjoyed the score by Christopher Frank. Uh, the opening of the film is very interesting when it's in Vietnam. Dolph Lundgren gives one of his best performances. I mean, as a crazed Sarge, who in Vietnam has these ears that he made into a necklace? Do you hear me? <laughs> and Van Damme's like, what the hell am I going to do with this fucking psycho? Van Damme's trying to do the right thing to save these people. And Dolph Lundgren's like, fuck that. They're traitors. Kill them. And then they both shoot each other. They're dead. But then they get put into trio, best way to put it, on ice. And part of this Universal Soldier program. I enjoy the idea of taking dead soldiers and reviving them and in a way brainwashing them to serve the government and do special missions, <clears throat> special ops type of stuff. Like this bit with the dam that they go down and take out these bad guys. The violence is there, practical blood squibs. I thought the story was well told. I didn't roll an emery, gave it a style and energy to it. And I thought the acting was good by both of these guys, because they're supposed to be playing lifeless soldiers. Emotionless, I should say, not lifeless, emotionless soldiers. But then you see, like, Van Damme starts remembering things. And then when you get to the end, you're dead, soldier. No. I'm alive. And then Dolph Lundgren, he's emotionless, then he gets crazier and fucking crazier. And some of the violent shit he does, like when he puts his hand through the guy's uh, helmet, you know, and wiping the blood. Any questions? When... Van Damme and the reporter, played by Ali Walker, who finds this story about these dead soldiers and the, the government want her silenced. So Van Damme's protecting her while Dolph and them are trying to hunt them down. Ali Walker, she did a wonderful job on the side note. She was very likable, easy to root for, had a good personality to her, had a good sense of humor, which is to deal in this craziness. I liked her reactions. They felt natural. But Dolph, I mean, they're both on a bus, and Dolph's in another vehicle, and throwing grenades. Are we having fun yet? Throwing grenades. Yeah! You know, woo! <laughs> or he's trying to get these soldiers revived, and he's talking to these random people in the supermarket. 
you tiss ass. I kick ass while you tiss ass. And I'm out there busting heads. There's only one way to deal with these motherfuckers. I'm going to kill them all. Show them all. Dolph does do a lot better than, job than me. He just. So fun in his performance. Which villains used to be that evil but fun. Wesley Snipes in Demolition Man. Tom Lee Jones in Under Siege. Dolph Lundgren in this. You don't get that nowadays. They either gotta be sympathetic or they're fucking boring as a sack of fucking rocks. Why do you have a sack of rocks? It's Ali. Unless you're playing a very boring, bland fucking game. I don't want to end up movies nowadays. The action scenes, the set pieces. You know, nice to see them. You know, they take this injection so they have a little bit of a, of a healing factor. As, which is a nice effect when he's in the bathtub with the ice and the wound heals. Or gives a little bit of superhuman strength. So Fandom's going through this motel, busting through wall after wall. While the Unisol shoot the shit out of this motel room and the whole building. There's explosions, there's car chases. There's some good fisticuffs as well as humor. Where Fandom just wants to eat. I just want to eat. They don't let him eat, so very smoothly, you know, taking people, kicking them. Which, you know, people make fun of his acting, but he did well in the acting. This is the role, this is what the role is meant to be played as. This guy who doesn't have emotion. And then you see that more and more by the time you get to the end. And again, you have this, the bus chase scene in the desert where Dolph is throwing grenades, practical explosions, going by this real bus. Doing where people get shot, blood squibs. Ed Ross, which he's been films, he was in Red Heat. He was the main villain in Red Heat. He plays one of the asshole guys working for the Unisol project. Nice death scene where Dolph just shoots and boom gets him right in the eyeball and that's what I mean by the direction just when Dolph pulls out the the gun I like the way it's edited uh, it's a well shot film the cinematography looks good on blu-ray and this blu-ray does have the features from the DVD which has a commentary pretty decent commentary has some little making ofs that were made for the when the DVD came out which is nice because you get to hear Roland Emmerich, Dean Devlin, Dolph, and Van Damme's thoughts on the film. They seem proud of it. Everyone seems proud of the film. The alternate ending, which fucking sucked ass. Because Van Damme and. Okay, the plot after the beginning, and then in the present day, Unisols do this mission, they're successful. The Universal Soldier Program is a success. Ali Walters, reporter, him. I mean, her and her cameraman, they go and investigate. They get caught, held. Dolph shoots the guy without being told to. She freaks out. That makes Van Damme remember what happened back in Vietnam. Rescues Ellie Walker. They get out of there. And then it's a chase film. Well, by the end, Ellie Walker and Van Damme get to Jerry Orbach. Which I remember him from Off for Justice with Steven Seagal. He was on TV shows. He was the doctor. And in the film it is, he's a good guy. I mean, he worked on it, but he's he doesn't fuck over the characters. Van Damme goes back to his mom and dad. Well, in the alternate ending, you find out that I think that wasn't really his mom and dad. I said, I don't remember... All the details because I only watched it once. I got so pissed off. I'm like, I'm not watching this fucking shitty ending again. If it ended like that, I would have hated this movie. I don't know what the fuck they were thinking with this ending when they first shot it. It was the mom and dad were not the real mom and dad. After Van Damme and Dolph have their fight, 
which is a was a shorter fight. Which again, like, why when you first shot it, will you not have the fight longer? But so it's a shorter fight, and then you find out the mom and dad weren't really Vanden's mom and dad, Jerry Orbach, and set up this trap. And somehow they realize Van Damme's character, he's going to age quickly. So Allie Walters is still the same age, but Van Damme goes through a rapid aging, and then he's going to die. It's only he's going to die, but he's going to at least have a little bit of time to live a normal life. But what the fuck ending is this? It's such a shitty ending. It's mind-blowing. I'm like, no wonder audiences would be like, this is stupid. So, they went back, they shot a longer fight scene, which is good. Has the same great editing that I love in the early Van Damme films. I, ta, ta, ta! So the repeated, like, if you do a kid, ta, ta, ta! I don't know, it's like a rhythm of a music you would see in early Van Damme films like Cyborg and uh, death warrants. And I love that kind of editing in the fight scenes. That sort of repeated action as edited almost like it's a, almost like it's music. That's the best way I could describe it. I love that stuff. And then after that, the mom and dad is really his mom and dad. This great death scene for Dolph where he gets chewed up in the wood chipper, and Ali Walker is like, "Where is he?" And Van Dev's like, around. And then they hug and the music crescendo, 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 if I learn how to talk right. And then it ends with that song, Body Count, Body Count by Ice-T. Which I like that song, that's a good song. Body Counts in the House, Body Count, Body Counts in the House, Body Count. Which if you see the music video, Dolph and Van Damme are in the music video, so I thought that was fun. It's too bad they didn't have the music video on here. Maybe they couldn't get the rights to the song, I don't know. Or to the video, I don't know. But, much better ending, the way we have it now, than that stupid alternate ending. And, and the fight between Van Damme and Dolph is epic. And that's why you know, I get disappointed in fight scenes like the fight between Stallone and Van Damme and Expendables 2. It may be a similar length, but the impact and what happens in between that and the buildup is so much better. And so much more epic. And the fight scene here, Dolph Lundgren is beating the shot of Van Damme. When I say jump, you say how high. Got it? Got it? Why can't you get it through your fucking head? You know, he thinks Allie Walker's dead, gets pissed off. Takes the injection to get on an even playing field. Say goodnight, asshole. Goodnight, asshole. And just beats the fuck out of him. Back and forth, punches, kicks. Kick him through the, the barn wall. You're dead, soldier. No, I'm alive. Great roundhouse kicks. Beautiful high, you know, whirlwind kicks. Uh, nice, you know, high kicks. The Stumble Dolph back till he gets impaled. And then, you know, when Dolph tries to pull him in, Van Damme breaks his arm. You're discharged, Sarge. Fucking eats him up in the wood chipper. Satisfying. That's a word that is satisfying. And I don't know why when I reviewed... I think when I reviewed Shodan Little Tokyo, I was so pissed at how poorly received that film got when it came out. It fucked up my brain. I'm like, of course, how could I forget this movie? This is my second favorite Dolph Lundgren film. So apologies if you see the Showdown Little Tokyo. Like, wait a minute, you said this? Showdown's your second favorite. Well, it's one of my favorites, but you know, as a soldier, it's got to put the edge above it. You know? Yeah, I like the sci-fi aspects of it. 
Again, very well directed by Roland Emmerich. They did a wonderful job with it. They took the low budget they had and utilized it to its full potential. I really don't have any problems with the film. Uh, Dolph Lundgren is a lot of fun. One of mo his most entertaining performances. He's having a lot. He's having a ball with this role. Probably my favorite role of his, where he played a villain. Like he, he's good as Ivan Drago, but the villain of this movie, man, he's so much fun. It's a ball to watch Dolph Lundgren play Sergeant Andrew Scott. And the band name is Luke Devereaux. I like the character. That's why I hated the Universal Soldier Regeneration Day of Reckoning, which I'm not going to re-review those because I ranted on those already when I did my Van Damme Marathon. If you want to know my thoughts, just go watch those videos. I hate those movies. What they did with Luke Devereaux, with Van Damme, making him a zombie once again. Uh, one or two good action scenes doesn't save the film. And then Day of Reckoning, there's some good action scenes in that as well. But then making Van Damme into pretty much a bad guy, or kind of a bad guy, but, oh, he was being used and put out of his misery. Fuck you. I'll watch Universal Soldier The Return, which got so much hate, but I think did a much better justice. <clears throat> if you want to know why I like Universal Soldier The Return so much, I looked in. I reviewed that when I reviewed the Van Damme movies. Feel free to check out my review. I think that's one of Van Damme's most underrated films, Universal Soldier. Universal Soldier The Return. With Michael J. White, Van Damme and Michael J. White has a fun fight scene. Bill Goldberg is in there. Uh, fun soundtrack, fast paced, lots of action, lots of explosions, lots of entertainment. Van Damme has smiling. But okay. I love you as a soldier return. I never understood the big hate that film got. I never understood it. Yeah, you know, I'll be one of the big defenders of that film. I love that movie. But this is a classic. And the fact that these you and then they want to remake this film? I've heard they want to remake this film. Why? Just let the fuck go. You don't need a remake of Universal Soldier. Do we need a reboot Tip Boxer? No. And the two films that came out of it were pieces of shit. We don't need a reboot of Universal Soldier. We don't need a remake. Leave the fuck alone. It's a damn good action movie. It's a classic. Tired of movies like this. And this, not getting the respect they deserve. While all this other horse shit nowadays, just the fuck to pass like gas from an ass, yet people want to talk shit about movies like this. And yes, people talk shit about Universal Soldier as well. They tell shit about a lot of these older movies. They talk shit about this movie. I guess I'm going to fix that. They talk shit about a lot of this stuff. Ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous in my opinion. But hey, what what can you do? By the way, thanks for watching. Take care. See you guys later. Definitely recommend the film if you've never seen it. If you like eight, if you like nineties action movies, you like these two guys. Uh, this is well worth a look. And again, I would say it's Roland Emmerich's best film in my opinion. But thanks for watching. See you guys later. Bye bye.